everybody, what is up? My name is Mackenzie. And I'm Jonathan. We are a husband and wife, and we'd like to welcome you to Paradise. And today we're gonna show you four games that you can teach in three minutes or less. And we're gonna prove it. First up on our list is Shobu, which is an abstract strategy game that looks great on your table. You can leave it out all the time and teach this to anybody. Let's dive in. In a game of Shobu, you will play as either the light colored stones or the dark colored stones. And your job is to try to push all of the stones of the other player's colors off one of the boards. On your turn, you'll start by moving passively on the board of your color. So the black stones will move on the darker colored boards. And you will move one stone from either board, either one or two spaces in a straight line or diagonally. You'll then repeat that motion actively on the light color board. So that will be any one stone. It could be this one, it could be this one, it could be this one. The same number of spaces in the same direction. The trick is, when moving a stone on your colored board, you cannot collide with any other pieces. So I could only move one space diagonally now, or one space straight. On the active boards, you can collide and push other stones. So I might choose to move this stone two spaces diagonally, and I'll repeat that with this stone on the active board and move two spaces diagonally, shoving a white stone off the board. When you shove all four stones of the enemy player's color off of a board, you win. Up next we have Strike, which is a game where you chuck dice and try not to run out. Now it's time to learn one of my favorite party games, Strike. All right, so Strike can be played up to two to five players. I have set this up as a three player game. So each person gets seven dice and then we are already set up because the game board is in the box itself. So the goal of the game is to be the last person standing with dice in their hand. If you ever run out of dice at any point during the game, then you are out of the game. There is no coming back. So you do this by rolling one dice into the arena you can do this by casually tossing it in, lightly throwing it. If it ever bounces out of the arena at any time, then that dice is no longer valid. It is out of the game. Then the next person throws their dice. All right, this one got a five. That is a pair. That means this person now gets those dice. Now the dice arena is empty, so the next player is all in. They take all of their dice and chuck them into the arena, and then they look for pairs. So we got a pair of six. That goes to them. A pair of twos, that goes to them. Now we have three X's. If an X is ever rolled during the game, this is now out of the game permanently. Nobody gets it. It is gone. So that means I am all in again. Let's throw this. All right, so I get sixes, three sixes, and an X. And then these, the X is out. So this person throws one die in, a two. Now I can choose to keep going or I can pass. In this case, I'm gonna keep going. A three, I'm gonna keep going. Uh, a two, so I got a pair, and once you get a pair, you move on. It should also be pointed out that when you're throwing a dice into the arena, you can aim for a dice that's already in there to try and mix up the numbers inside. And the game continues like that. You get pairs, you move on, until there is one person remaining in the game. And that is how you play Strike. Up next is Bites, where we are under the picnic table as ants collecting food and trying to get the best picnic. Alrighty, let's learn how to play Bites. In Bites, you are at a picnic and you are a series of ants collecting food and making their way towards the ant hill at the end of the game. Once all ants have reached the hill, the player with the most points about their food wins. On your turn in Bites, you'll take any of the colored ants on the trail and you'll move them to the next food of that color. So I could take the green ant and move them to the next pepper. I will then collect the food either directly in front of or behind that ant. So I might pick up this grape. As the next player starts their turn, they will then take one of the other ants, maybe the purple ant, and move them to the next grape, where they'll take the food in front or behind. Now, if there is an ant on the food directly in front or behind, they'll go until they reach an available food they can collect. Once an ant of any color reaches the ant hill at the end of the line, they'll be placed on one of the tiers of the ant hill, denoting that now the grapes are worth four points or three points, or two points, or one point, or zero points. Once all ants have made it to the end of the ant hill, all of your food will be scored according to the points for each ant, and the player with the most points wins. In addition to the food tiles, there are also chocolate and wine tiles. Whenever an ant moves to a space where they could collect a chocolate tile, 
It's placed in their inventory to be played at a later time. In every game of Bites, there are four cards in play. One that tells you the rules for the wine, one for the chocolate, one for the expansion pieces, in this case no effect, and also one for how ants are played on the ant hill. This one says that for each chocolate token I have, I can turn them in to collect two foods on my turn. So when I move the yellow to the cheese, I can collect the apple, and I can collect the grape. In this game of Bites, each wine token is worth one point for each unique food type you've collected throughout the game. Up next we got Drop It, which is basically Connect Four for adults. All right, I'm gonna be teaching you how to play Drop It. In Drop It, you're gonna be dropping different shapes inside the drop zone, and you'll be earning points as it fills up. Now, you cannot, when you drop in the drop zone, touch any of the same color or any of the same shape. You also cannot touch any of the indicated shapes it shows going up, the, going up vertically and also horizontally indicated right here. So where I have placed my yellow square, that is a valid move. So I get one point, which is indicated by this zone right here. As you get higher and higher, it's going to be worth more and more points. And the little circles indicated right here, those are the bonus zones. If you're able to get one of your shapes to touch that, you will get those additional points. The next player, they will take a circle and I'll see if I can land it on my yellow, on that yellow square. Oh no, okay, so the blue bounced over and hit this no circle, circle zone. So I do not get any points. Then green will go. Green will take their triangle. All right, so I get my points. I get one point for green. As the game goes on, it gets more and more challenging trying to avoid the same shapes and those same colors. So it continues until everyone has put in all of their shapes and the person with the most points at the end of the game wins. In addition to the shapes, you can also play with colors. So this is the same concept, except you are trying to avoid hitting the colored spots. In addition, you can also play with joker tiles. Now each player gets two of these and they can be used to ignore the requirements used for those shapes. All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed learning those four different games, and I hope you're gonna be able to teach those to your friends just as quickly. Make sure to reference this video if you wanna know how. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can know whenever we put out a new video. And next week, we're gonna be putting out a top list of party games that don't suck. See you there. Happy, Happy playing. playing.